Hi, in this video we'll look at setting up your first project. This is a Blinky demo which you can find on our GitHub page. Make sure you've seen the previous video on how to set up the tool chains and development environment. And in this video we'll build this project and upload it to our board. Let's go. So we can begin by going down to cloning this repository. We can copy this link here and then clone that repository anywhere you like. I'm just going to put it into my home folder here. And then as soon as that's done, we can jump into the S1 Blinky demo. Now, if I run make from the command line here, you'll see that it throws an error. And this is because make doesn't know where the Nordic SDK is located. We need to provide that as an argument. But instead of driving this from the command line now, I'm going to use VS Code. You can of course use any editor that you like, but we've provided some handy scripts for you to, uh, to automate the build process for you inside this .VS Code folder. So we'll jump into VS Code and continue from there. Okay, so here we are in VS Code. I've opened the project folder and you can see all the files from the repository listed in the window here. Um, before we get started, I just want to go through a few handy plugins. Um, this one, the Cortex Debug plugin, is quite useful for debugging. Um, it lets you configure the JLink to use the VS Code debugger. Um, and it's pretty straightforward to set up. You can search for all of these inside this extension search box here. And right now I'm trying out this Verilog um, checking and syntax highlighting tool. So you can try this out as well if you like. There are lots and lots of options to choose from, um, but these three are pretty quick to get you started, so that will come in handy. Now we're back in the folder view of the project, and I'll go through what all of these different files are a little bit later on. But for now, we can open the VS Code folder, and we want to edit these, these three JSON files here. These will help us automate the building and debugging. Um, it also gives us some nice uh, um, features for searching for different things in the project and stuff like that. So you'll see in each of these, um, there's a comment where you need to update something. So what we need to do first is rename each of these. So we remove the underscore template and the C at the end. So we want just task.json here. We rename this one to launch.json. We rename this one to ccpppproperties.json. They've gone gray because these are ignored in the template uh, or the example um, project. Um, so these won't change when you um, uh, update the repository. Um, but in your repository of your own projects, you can uh, manage these however you like. Um, so we can go into here. If you remember from the previous video, I put the Nordic SDK inside of a tools folder inside my home directory. So this is the SDK here. So I need to update this directory to be tools. And there are a few instances of this. So I will just search here and then I'll replace with tools like this, nrf5 SDK, and I'll change all of those, uh, not the first one, that one, that one, that one. Okay, then we have the um, GNU GCC install directory. This should be in your applications folder or your program files if you're on Windows. Um, remember from the last video that I have mine just in my applications folder inside the ARM directory. So that's correct in ARM, and then you want the bin directory there. If you're on a multi-core um, computer, you can set this to however many cores you have, and it makes the build uh, a bit faster. And that's all we need to do inside tasks.json. Now we can look at the main make file and see how the project is actually being built. So the first thing the make file uh, requires is this NOF SDK path and the GNU install root variables. You'll notice that inside the task.json, that's exactly what we updated here. 
So whenever you hit build inside VS Code, um, VS Code calls make on the command line and it passes these two variables to the make file. The make file then um, includes all the source files. So here we have the main.c, which is the main application in our case here. And we're also including all the header files from this directory. So that will include the SDK config.h and the FPJ bin file.h. After that, all the magic is really done inside this uh, S1 SDK S1.mk file. This is a make file inside the S1 SDK. And this includes all the Nordic specific things, all of the library files and configuration, the chip configuration, all the different flags. Um, and this is designed to be a, a sort of generic uh, make file. And anything you want to append to this, you can do it inside your own project make file. So the structure of this uh, Blinky demo is as if how you'd want to do it in uh, your own project. So you'd simply include the S1 SDK into your um, project repository and your make file would do a bunch of configuration and you can override pretty much everything inside this S1 uh, make file if you like. Um, you could even, even write your own and not actually call this one. Um, but all of these things can be updated. So if you want to add a different C flag or add another C flag, um, you can do C flags plus equals inside your make file here. Um, include any of your other application C files, any other um, header folders that you need. Um, and then you can also include additional build tasks. So for example, here I have a build Verilog task. And whenever I call make build Verilog, it will um, run these commands on the command line. So this is designed to be pretty generic and you can update this. And the idea behind this is that if you're working with multiple people and you all have your SDKs in different places, you don't have to um, have different make files each. Um, you simply need to update. You simply just have a separate task.json each um, and it's okay to have things in different folders and different systems. And now it's the moment of truth. So on um, Windows and Linux, you can hit Control B, and on a Mac, you can hit Command B, and that will build the project. Assuming everything is installed correctly and everything's correct, you will see an output that looks a bit like this. And a build folder, a dot build folder, should appear with the final firmware bin and hex file. Another way to access the build command is by hitting Control Shift P or Command Shift P. And then you can type run task if it's not already there. And inside run task, you'll see a bunch of tasks that are listed. These are the same tasks that are listed in tasks.json. So if you want to add additional tasks, you can simply add it in tasks.json and it will appear here. Um, here we can do things like clean the project, uh, which removes the .build folder. And the next time you build, it'll be a fresh build. We can also build the Verilog, um, synthesize the Verilog. So you see here that that worked, there were no errors. This means all of the FPJ tools are working correctly. Um, and uh, we created the FPJ binary um, and we converted the bin file, the FPJ bin file, which is uh, over here. Um, this, is, uh, this is what we load to the FPGA. We turn that into a header file, which is this one. Um, and that gets built into the NRF application. In this in this example, that simply the NRF simply just flashes the uh, FPGA, and then we can do build NRF code from here as well. So as soon as this is working, uh, you have the final firmware ready for the module. We can move on to debugging the project and flashing the module. There are a few different ways you can debug the pop-up board. Um, the best way is by using a commercial J-Link debugger along with a 10-pin ARM debug cable. Um, if you don't have one of those, you can also use the NRF52DK board. This is available from Nordic and it has a built-in J-Link debugger that you can use with NRF52 chips. If you connect a cable from this corner connector over here to the pop-out board, uh, the debugger built-in will talk to the module instead of the NRF52 chip over here. A low cost option if you're using this for hobby or educational use is the JLink EDU or EDU Mini. 
Um, but however you decide to debug the board, uh, you will need to provide power as well. So either with a USB-C power adapter or a lithium battery connected to this connector here. So as soon as you have that all plugged in, um, powered up, you can uh, go back to VS Code and we need to first update the JSON uh, file, the launch.json file. Again, just as we updated the task.json, we just need to check a couple of paths are correct here. So first, make sure to update the ARM toolchain path um, to point to the ARM GCC toolchain. And also, uh, this SVD file needs to point to the NOF52 uh, SDK folder. The SVD file is a map of all the registers inside the NOF chip and it lets the debugger, uh, the debug environment inside VS Code uh, read those registers. So here I'll update that to tools slash NRF5 SDK and we can save that and then to start debugging simply hit F5 or you can go up to run and start debugging over here. So that's now flashing the module um, and we will jump into, it should take us into the main.c file and at the entry point to main. There we go. So if we go into the debug pane here, we can see all the local and global variables that we have. Uh, you can create a watch list. Um, you can see your call stack and create breakpoints um, throughout your code. Um, and you'll notice here that there are some uh, um, log statements. These are print line style log statements. Um, and these are coming back through through the um, uh, JLink debugger. Uh, and Sega provides some tools for you to view these logs. Um, and the protocol it uses is called RTT, so proprietary uh, JLink protocol. So to view these logs, we can uh, create a new terminal over here. And I will type in uh, JLink RTT client like this. And now it's waiting for um, the logs to start coming through. So if I hit play over here, you can see that here we go. We got the uh, build date and version. And next we will see that uh, it should start flashing the um, uh, module. Uh, the there we go, it's flashing the uh, FPGA, and now the FPGA has started blinking. So that's how to debug. So if I, if I pause the application here, you can see it's just waiting for interrupt because the state machine for uh, the boot up is complete um, and it does nothing else now, just waits. Um, so you can easily um, build and debug your projects from VS Code, everything is done in here. Um, and next we can quickly look at all, all these files and see how you can extend onto your own projects, how you can take this blinky demo and create your own, create your own uh, repository from this. The main idea here is that the S1 SDK is a, a repository within the, the project we have here. This means that when we go to our source control, um, we have our local S1 Blinky demo, uh, in your case this could be um, your own project, um, and then the S1 SDK is a separate repository with its own version uh, that's linked into, um, into this repository. So inside the S1 SDK there are a bunch of different files, but essentially these are helper functions and um, some headers that let you easily get been running with uh, the module. So the s1.h includes all the APIs to configure the module and start up the module, um, including the power, um, uh, the pmic built-in has a lot of different configuration that you can do, such as um, setting the core voltage of the FPJ if you want to shut it down, um, setting the aux output, uh, which is a buck boost output from the module, um, or the I.O. voltage for the FPGA, you can set that um, with the built-in regulator. Uh, you can change um, uh, the battery charging parameters inside the module. All this stuff can be controlled from here. 
You also have control over the FPGA boot up and reset. That's all in there. And then there's just a few logging uh, helper functions. Uh, and as time goes on, we will um, add more things to this and make it a little bit nicer to use. Um, you can see all the pins are defined here. So you just need to call these pins in your application rather than knowing exactly what connects to what inside the module. Um, and again, the S1 make file, uh, you can uh, call this make file from your own make file and make any changes that you need. Uh, and the version control of this is all done um, uh, through Git. So once you're on a particular version for the SDK, it won't keep changing unless you specifically uh, update it. So here we can see that the S1 uh, Blinky demo is actually on an older version of the S1 SDK. We've actually updated the SDK since this demo, or this example. So if I wanted to update the SDK here, I could simply click on this and check out the latest main or a particular commit if I wanted to. And as soon as I do that, uh, you can see that um, inside my local repository, uh, the SDK has also been updated. So now if we build, uh, we are now building against the latest SDK uh, rather than the one that was on there previously. So you can use this template and this structure for your own projects. Um, the SDK is intended to be a sort of uh, addition rather than a full stack. So it doesn't try to be a layer in between the Nordic SDK and your application, but rather an addition. So uh, really all of these things you can override, but we've designed uh, all these functions to be safe and tested. Um, the main thing being that the PMIC is capable of blowing everything up on the module if you don't set it correctly. So we apply checks when you call these functions to make sure that can't happen. Um, and we, we test it thoroughly and as we find bugs and improve things, then you can get those features as well. But if there's anything missing, you can create an issue in the S1 SDK repository and we can get, we can get around to fixing that. Um, but otherwise, you can just create your main uh, application and all the other files that you want in your main application. Uh, you can create your uh, Verilog project, however you like, and all of that can be in whatever structure you want and you just point to uh, wherever they are from your own makefile and configure the project as you need. So I hope that helps you get up and running. If you have any questions, you can put it in the comments below. Um, be sure to subscribe uh, and we will be releasing more videos, uh, some of the other examples uh, uh, soon. So hopefully we get a Bluetooth example up and um, uh, an example on um, the ECG kit, which is releasing very soon. Um, a quick note about how this uh, application actually works. Uh, it's a very, very basic application. All it does is start up the FPGA. It turns on the core voltages, resets the FPGA, wakes up the flash chip on the S1 module. It then erases the flash chip, flashes the flash chip with the FPGA binary file. That's this guy. And uh, it boots it up. So that's all it's doing. Um, in reality, this takes up a huge amount of uh, flash memory on the NOF chip. Um, and in a more sophisticated ap application, you would actually uh, be better off loading this uh, binary over Bluetooth and saving it directly into the flash rather than hard coding it into the NOF um, memory like we have here. Um, so you can extend that as you like and uh, we'll, we'll try and get some uh, APIs around that for, for the future. Um, and in the, the Blinky file, uh, there are a lot of examples that you can search on GitHub, uh, a lot of open source projects uh, that use Verilog. Um, all the open source tools that we're using support Verilog and System Verilog as well. So we can write this in System Verilog as well if we wanted to. So all this application does, it, it creates a counter. This is the, it, it creates an output uh, register of, of 8 bits. Um, and this connects the high speed internal oscillator. Uh, this configures, uh, this 1-1 one, one configures the, the speed of the internal oscillator, 6 megahertz. Uh, we then uh, set the enable bit, the power up bit, 
and we output the signal of this block to um, a clock signal, which is implicitly declared here. On the positive edge of the clock, um, we're simply adding one to this counter. And whenever we reach uh, this particular value, we uh, toggle, um, uh, no, we add uh, um, one to the port register. Uh, D3, which is the LED output of the FPGA, that's this output here. Uh, that's just reading um, the second bit uh, of the port register, and that results in a 400 millisecond blink. If you were to create uh, connect a logic analyzer to all of the pins um, of the the module and assign every bit in the port to every output on the on the pop up board, you'll see that there's a, a pattern of um, each uh, each bit toggling. Um, one cycle after the other. Um, when it comes to building the Verilog uh, um, file, that's done using this task here. And you can customize this for your needs. You can add additional files here. You can change uh, some of these flags and how this works. Um, be sure to check out some of our other examples because we do this differently um, for different examples. Um, but here we do, we call Yosis to synthesize the Verilog. That gives us a JSON, uh, intermediate JSON file. That's used then by NextPNR to um, create the, um, um, uh, essentially do the place and root. Uh, and the result of that becomes the binary file through the ice pack tool. And this is the ice storm tools. And once that's done, um, because we're just hard coding this binary into the NRF application, uh, we want to turn this bin file into a header file. So we just go through this using the XXD tool. This is a standard, uh, fairly common uh, Unix tool. Uh, should be available on Linux and, uh, and uh, Mac. And uh, if you're using um, an environment like MinGW in Windows, this will also work. But this could easily be a Python script. Uh, or anything that turns this bin file, just takes every byte and just turns it into this header file here. And then we're just appending const to the start of the, the bin file. So um, by default, this const isn't there. So as soon as you put the const in, this gets saved into the flash memory of the NRF rather than the RAM, um, because the RAM isn't big enough to hold this big uh, binary file. So this is the whole uh, binary file for the FPGA that's flashed onto the FPGA or loaded onto the FPGA as soon as the FPGA comes out of reset. Uh, and normally this would live in the um, uh, external flash memory on, on board the module rather than uh, being baked into the NRF application like this. So yeah, that's everything. Um, be sure to check out the documentation for this, where all of these things are explained in a little bit more detail. And hope to see you in the next video.